Hey, everybody, you're listening to Crystal here with the Plant Pusher podcast. And what's really, really exciting is that we're here with you to always talk about all things plants, colors, textures, shapes, their impacts on your life. I love working with plants. I love introducing you to new plants. And here at Plant Pusher, that's what I do. I push you straight to the plants. Hey, welcome back. This is your favorite plant pusher. And I'm excited today because we're talking about edible flowers. Okay. Now, I want you guys to know that in my spirit, I am obsessed with being a little old lady. Like, I cannot wait to become like 80. I've always wanted to become a little elderly lady since I was a little girl because I felt like they were super dope people. They got to do what they wanted, grow what they want, cook what they want, invite people over, and then tell other people to mind their business. Like, it's really dope. Being being elderly sounds so fun to me. And so since I grew up with so many amazing grandparents on both sides of my family, both grandparents and great-grandparents, I got to experience a lot of things at the uh, hands of, of those who are mature in age. And one of the things a lot of great mature people do is they, oftentimes they've been known to plant flowers. So I want to talk about edible flowers today and the benefits of so many edible flowers and maybe even edible flowers that you enjoy. So the first one I want to talk about is squash blossoms. So I know you guys like life on the edge. I know you like trying new things, but squash blossoms are these gorgeous, huge, beautiful orange flowers. I like a yellow, orange color. And when you're growing squash, um, even melons, you'll see these big, beautiful, bright flowers that open up. And so on the squash blossoms, people oftentimes will harvest the blossom and stuff it. Okay. You can stuff it with anything from cheeses to desserts. They bake them, they add them on top of pasta and soup. Squash blossoms are gorgeous in color, but they also are simply beautiful. They're beautiful to look at, let alone to even eat. So they're edible. So, you know, spice up the plate. Come on, serve something different. Stuff some squash blossoms with your favorite things and serve them as a a starter uh, at a at a dinner party or even to your family on side their plate with dinner. Um, how easy is that to gather some squash blossoms and maybe put like some some beautiful um, cream cheese or feta cheese with your favorite vegetables chopped up and amazing sauce drizzles, drizzled over it. Stuff it whatever you want. Rice, go for it. You know, I, I love an experience. I love a two for one. Give me something with something in it and I'm all about it. So that was one that I really enjoy. I've also enjoyed growing squash blossoms myself. They're beautiful because I love growing squash and melons. So you guys know that planting is my thing. And another one that a lot of people often enjoy is also roses. Now, I know y'all think, oh, that sounds so boring. But roses not only can be edible, but also they're amazing. You can make rose water with them, which is great for your skin and your hair, packed with antioxidants and smells gorgeous. It's one of nature's many natural perfumes. But roses also um, come in a variety of colors. So while it's a classic garden staple, they're beautiful in color. They give an amazing flavor profile from sweet to spicy. So, of course, the darker the rose petal, the more intense the flavor profile is going to be. But think about it in ice cubes, serve it in ice cream, have it, you know, over a, a, a listen, I'm thinking about trying it in a taco. I know it sounds crazy, but that sounds really tasty to me. And I'm all about leading with plants and my stomach. So it's just where I stem from. So another one that you might also really, really enjoy uh, with friends or neighbors is think about it, thyme. Thyme also is a flower, but it's a spice. But I love spices in drinks. So whether you're doing a mocktail or a cocktail, my thought on this one is to um, have some in, in my actual drink but then also have it garnish the the lip of the glass so my drink can be a little spicy, a little sweet. I'm kind of growing into this spicy thing. So I really enjoy um, a spicy drink with uh, some fruit undertones. But time, okay, of course you think of seasoning in your cabinet, but please put some respect on it. The flowers are there. They're edible. They're doing the work. We're going to enjoy them at different levels because I love time. Okay, so another one is mint. 
Okay, I really, really, really enjoy mint. And one of my favorite mints is chocolate mint. It flowers beautifully. And the mint, of course, smells like mint and chocolate had a baby. And it tastes like mint and chocolate. So think of it like your favorite, like York patty or or those other like Alpine mint candies you had as a kid, that mint and chocolate definitely is a flavor profile of chocolate mint. And sometimes you can find it growing wild. So whether it's on a cake, whether you are adding that nutty aroma to your coffee or your tea, chocolate mint is one of my favorites, but mint as a whole is an edible flower. Put some respect on it and don't forget Y'all know how I feel about it. it. It's a whole vibe. I love mint. Mint is also good for your digestive tract as well as helping you like fight, fight inflammation and bacterial. It's antimicrobial. Like mint has so many benefits to it. But when it comes to getting down, 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 a cup of tea, some mint tea will do you just fine. We want you to be always in the best place for your well-being. So mint is here to stay. Don't bolt it off the island, whether we're eating Italian and we're putting mint in our food or whether we're putting it in a drink like a mojito. Mint is a flower that is edible. And when it comes on your plate as your garnish, do me a favor and take a bite. If I see y'all throw it in the trash, I will be disappointed. I'm always sad when people leave the garnish on the plate. It is meant to be ingested. It has an additional flavor profile, whether it's parsley, mint, citrus, thyme, or rosemary. Anytime those adornments are put on your plate, please try them with your food. It elevates the palate and makes it a party in your mouth. And y'all know I like to party. Okay. The next one is my favorite matronly little old lady flower of the day is marigolds. Okay. We're going to make marigolds sexy. The bees love them. I love them. They come in a quadrillion colors. Yes, they keep the pest away. But marigolds are amazing in tea and in salads. They do an excellent job of aiding with seasoning food. And you want to remove the bitter white part at the end of the petal before you consume it. But other than that, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Dress the plate up. Listen, when y'all have a date and you want to really impress them, Grab some marigolds, sprinkle them on the plate a little bit, some petals, or put them around. Listen, they don't think you put some real elbow grease into this. I'm trying to get y'all some extra hugs if that's what you desire. Okay? So, marigolds, beautiful, easy to grow. Stop by your, your favorite buck store, you know, where you only, you know, spend a little bit of your cha-ching, one of them at a time, like a dollar. And grab you some marigold seeds. Go to your favorite in home improvement store. Put them in a pot. They grow super easy and quick. And you can add them to your meals, add them to your tea, sprinkle and go. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. The other one that I really love are orchids. Listen, I know people think lavender and lavender is another beauty, but these orchids are giving and I love orchids orchids in a salad. I also like orchids on on my favorite like burger. Um, And so I'll take a plant-based burger and also like shred some purple cabbage and some orchids. Listen, I'm ready to eat. Best flavor ever. I love the fact that it has a, a, a bit of a smoky undertone, but then it also has a sweet back end. So I think like it's a great um, combination for like a barbecue sauce too. Don't get me started because I did make an excellent barbecue sauce for my family and we made it out of raspberries um, and put some orchids on that thing and ta-da, okay? It's time to eat. So don't forget the orchids. Don't forget the marigolds. And last but not least, your favorite long lost cousin is lavender. You guys like it in teas. You love it in drinks. You love it in sprays. But let me tell you something. There are multiple varieties of lavender, I personally love a good lavender lemonade, okay? Love it. It's everything. It's cool. It's refreshing. Um, I It doesn't have to make me sleepy. It can relax me on a day where maybe you're stressed out. You got a lot going on. Honey, sip you some lavender tea. And it's like they're not even talking about anything. I mean, you hear them. We're responding, but we are not bothered. Okay, we're having a whole experience. And I love the way lavender brings that to you. One of my favorite varieties is a French variety that's a little smoky. 
you know, doesn't smell as matronly, but tastes amazing going down. It's not bold. It's really, really smooth. But you know, that's just me. I'm just your favorite plant pusher, giving you all of the different flowers that are edible that I can't live without. I need you to try them. Let me know what you think. Please sprinkle those roses on your tacos and get back with me because I love pushing the best plants onto you every time. That's what we're doing. I'm encouraging you from plants. So I'm so glad you stopped by today. And I can't wait to talk to you next time because I'm here. And this is The Plant Pusher. And I can't wait to show you what's next. Peace. This show, Plant Pusher Podcast, is brought to you by Possibilities Podcast Platform. We appreciate you listening. Stay tuned. Your favorite episode is up next.